In this video, I replaced this massive Ryobi hand tool panel with this beastie Milwaukee hand tool panel. Let me show you how I did it. So let's build a panel now. I built a couple of these and I won't go through the entire process step by step. If you want to see that, go and check out the last panel that we built because we went to B&Q, we picked up the materials, I walked you through the cost price for all of these and they're pretty good, you know. They could be better if you buy from builders merchants and rip all your own sheets of material down, you will make these for cheaper. But this is the balance between cost and time and time is precious. You only get a limited amount and I want to save some time with these panels. So we've got these sheets of MDF, the 12 mil, and they measure 1220 millimeters by 610. And that's literally the size of the panel. We also bought some edge laminated pine board and they were 200 mil wide and we ripped them down into these 50 mil rips. And these are going to form our frame. So we're basically going to have two long sides, two short sides. Now in the last one, I used a countersunk drill, which is pretty cool. You just drill it kind of countersunk's hole for you. They're a great little tool. I love them. And we just basically put two screws in each end and then we screwed the back on so we could unscrew it and take it off if we ever want to change the foam. And we glued and pinned the front frame on. In this one though, I've picked up this pocket hole jig. Now I've never done pocket holes, but I'm a big YouTube fan and I watch loads of different makers and creators. And I've been seeing pocket hole jigs, usually from Craig, actually, the ones that are most commonly that I've seen. But this one is from Trend and we're big fans of Trend. They're uh, in the UK and we've got a few of their toolboxes and things. So I thought, well, we'll go for the Trend pocket hole kit and we've got basically this clamp and we've got a whole set of screws it's basically a way of screwing these two together with a nicer joint so you won't be able to see any screw holes from the outside and yeah first things first though I need to cut these all to length so same as last time I won't be measuring them you know who's got time for measuring I'll just be flushing this end here and then marking this end here and then squaring that up cutting two long lengths and then two short lengths and this is going to be mounted horizontally as you've already seen from the intro so yeah let's cut these down Right, so that is the back all screwed on and that is nice and solid. And that's the thing, well, I've used the pocket screws, two screws there, two screws in each of the joints, but by having the back screwed on so well and so securely, that's holding it all together as well. So it's really, really solid. All we need now is a piece of foam. So I've already had one pre-cut, so you can go to shadowfoam.com and go to our custom size page and you can get any piece of foam from there. The internal of this panel is 119 by 57, which is the exact size of this. This is a 50 mil piece of shadow foam and it should just slot in there like perfection. That is smashing. It's fighting me because it's so close of a fit. There's air trapped underneath. We've got a little bit of this beading. This is also from B&Q and we're going to glue, mitre glue and pin this around the front and that's going to hold that piece of foam in there. It's going to frame it really nicely and if we ever want to change it I can unscrew the back which is nice. As regards the pocket hole jig, I got on with this quite well. It was really simple. Literally just set the depth of the clamp, clamp the wood in place. Basically what this kit comes with is special screws and a special drill bit. So this uh, drill bit goes down these holes on an angle and it drills a pocket hole in a piece of timber and then you use these button head screws and basically you're just putting in some like covert screws that can go internal. So I see these a lot for drawers. There's quite a few makers that use them to put drawers together and I think we'll probably now I've had a little go of it on a simple project. It's nice to know I've got it for anything, any other projects we do in the future and I've got a big box of screws as well, all different sizes. So that's all the building work done. All I've got to do now is just attach this little bit of trim and then we're going to take this whole panel over to our new workshop because that's where all the Milwaukee hand tools are. So we'll take that over there. I can talk you through what tools we've got and then hopefully put a layout together. And then the last thing will be mounting this on the wall. So we've done a lot with French cleats. Exhibit A here behind me. This is all mounted on French cleats. They all lift down and they've all got this angled plate on. But for where this is mounting, this panel, I think we're going to go for more of an off the shelf solution. So you can get brackets which are like strip brackets. They work in a very similar fashion to French cleat, but they should be, if we can find somewhere, I should be able to just buy them by meter length basically. And that'll make it nice and simple to mount this on the wall and also it'll get it flusher to the wall, closer to the wall, which I'm really uh, happy with, especially for where it's going. So let's get this trim attached and then let's head over to the new workshop.
There we go, all done. And that took me about an hour and a quarter, I reckon. And that is the beauty of having all the materials, or some of the materials, pre-cut and ready. So to me anyway, it's worth the extra few quid to get a sheet of MDF that's already the right size, which I'm happy with. All we then had to do was cut the rails down. Obviously we've cut the trim down now, pinned it on the front, and I've got a 50 mil red shadow foam blank slate there to kind of do a really cool Milwaukee panel. And we have got a huge amount of Milwaukee hand tools, but they're all over at the new workshop. So let's take this over there and get a layout sorted. So here we are. I've brought the panel over to our new studio workshop and I'm loving it. It feels like a much cleaner setup. We've got some cabinets behind me. So we've got a big old toolbox here ready to be filled with foam and tools. And you might recognize this. Ryobi tool panel. Sadly, we couldn't fit it in vertically, so I've, uh, <laughs> I've put it horizontally, which is really great on me. It looks good, and let me know in the comments what you think of it up there. I think the spacing of it's cool, but these kind of tools and brands that aren't square, I can't be having that for very long. I think we'll stand it for this video, but we'll get this Milwaukee hand tool panel up finished, and then we'll switch it over get some red in the backdrop and get everything the right orientation. And then maybe we'll have to revisit that and sort that out. Also got a big cabinet here and it fits in just nice and tidy behind me. And you recognize this. If you've not watched, I printed a tool case. Literally, I'm, I'm, I'm an absolute novice when it comes to 3D printing. And it's something I've been avoiding it because I felt like I should get into it because there's definitely some kind of uh, interesting content there. It'd be nice to see what we can do with the 3D printer, printing tool organizers and stuff. But I knew it was a big commitment to learn it or I thought it was, but we got sent this thing and it's flipping a breeze. It was really easy. We printed a tool case and it took pretty much hardly anything. I just loaded it up on the USB stick, clicked print, and it, we had a tool case. So go and watch that video. Here's the link because we organized some shadow foam in it too. So it was a cool video and we're still looking for ideas on what to do next with that. So I'll put it in this backdrop in here. It's nice and clean. This is going to be our clean working studio. So we'll be cutting the foam in here, possibly doing a live stream. Who knows? But it's a much easier to work in space than our last workshop, which was a very classic workshop. Lots of sawdust, lots of mess, and hopefully we can keep it a bit cleaner in here. So let's go on to the tool panel. So this is all going to be Milwaukee hand tools, which we don't have. So let me go and get those. Does everybody know what time it is? Tool time! That's right! So here is the Milwaukee tools collection. I'll talk you through everything we've got and everything we're going to try and get organized. And there's some real belters. I think Milwaukee, I've got one of the most broad spectrum of hand tools on, out of all of the different brands. It's amazing how good their hand tools are and how broad of a range they've got when they're really a power tool manufacturer, really. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I think Milwaukee. The hand tools are like a sideline, but they've really got it covered. Now, we already had some Milwaukee hand tools, so we've done a video, Milwaukee versus Dewalt. I had some hand tools in that, so you can go and check those out. There's a link if you're interested. So some of these you might be familiar with, some of them are new though. So we've got a Milwaukee screwdriver set. This was something I already had from a previous video. But we did pick up a set of these. These are like through tang, I call them. What do they call them? All metal core demolition screwdrivers, but they're like a through tang, metal all the way through, so you can kind of pound on the back of it and it, you've, you've got metal all the way through. So you're not gonna, obviously, if you hit the back of that with a hammer, these are plastic screwdrivers and it'll just smash to bits over time. So I thought they were a nice addition to go with the existing screwdriver set because it kind of gives you a bit more versatility. We've also got a ratcheting screwdriver and this is a nice little bit of gear because you've got long screwdriver bits in the handle which is quite smart. We've got a speed square, love a speed square. And obviously this, we've also made a Dewalt hand tool panel. So every tool that was in that panel that Milwaukee had a version of, I wanted to pick up so we could compare them at some point. If you want to see that, you got to let me know in the comments, is this the kind of thing you want to see? So we've got the six inch speed square, we've got the folding sawzall. Well, that's the blade, the sawzall. So that's from the Milwaukee sawzall, but this is like reset blades that go in a handle. I'd call that a pad saw. I don't know what you'd call that, but that's a really solid bit of gear. We've also got the compact hacksaw. I probably only need one of those. I got a load of tools over the Black Friday sale because uh, there were some real good deals to be had and they've been in a tote ever since. So they actually look very, very similar. They've got the same style handle. Obviously one's folding. That's a nifty addition to a toolkit. If you're trying to make a really compact tool set, that is a nice little thing. So we've got that. We've got a stubby version of the uh, the ratchet screwdriver. We've got tape measures, classic. You've got to have those eight meters and five meters. So I'll kind of put some measurement stuff over there. This is one of my favorites. This is a pair of bolt croppers that extend. Now I had a look, I couldn't see any other company making extendable bolt croppers. I quite like looking at the EDC videos. I don't know if you know what that means, everyday carry. And some of the guys that are doing prepping and preparing for emergencies. And this kind of thing, I think, it's a great tool to have. I mean, a bolt cropper is always handy. We use them quite regularly, cutting locks off containers and stuff. But they're a handy thing to have. Sometimes to get you out of a pinch, having a pair of bolt croppers is great. But the idea that they, the handles, you know, you obviously need long handles for all of the torque to get through some heavy duty stuff. 
But the fact that they extend and it goes down to this small size, and you could have that in a compact kit, maybe a prep kit or a, an emergency preparedness kit, I think that's awesome. And it was one of my favorite items, and that's why I picked it up, even though it's a bit big for our panel, definitely wanted it. So I love that. Has anyone used this? Let me know, it's called the, um, power move and it goes from 360 mil and it extends up to 450 so maybe we can do some testing with that and cut some uh, steel chain see what you can do so that was a really cool pickup we've got a couple of levels this is the little five quid one that you can get from that was from tool station till and then you've got this one we've spoke about this in the past it's got like a moving dial i've never had much faith in it really because it feels like you're never quite sure if it's set to perfectly square but that's aluminium so it's really good quality similar to the fastback material Speaking of fastbacks, we've got a couple of those. So we've got the first fastback I ever had, which is the classic model. It's got kind of a little section here for some blades. It's made out of aluminium. It's really solid and heavy. Then I picked up this version. It's like a really slim line fastback, also aluminium body, and there's space for some blades too. The feel of this second one, this more modern one, it's all rounded and smoothed on the edges. It's just a much better knife. Now, then they released this one which has got a bit driver, which is a great little addition. I mean, you can't have any, there's no space for spare blades on it. But uh, as soon as I saw the picture of it, I thought that is flipping handy. A little bit driver in your pocket. That can be part of an everyday carry as well. You can have it in your tool kit, your little go-to grab and go kit. The only problem with it is it's made out of plastic. It's like these are both aluminium body, but this thing's plastic. So hopefully, I have heard word that you can get an aluminium version of this. I've not been able to find it, but maybe uh, I haven't spent a lot of time looking. So maybe I've just missed it. But uh, I am due to go to America. And uh, you guys in America have everything we don't, so maybe I'll get one over there. But I don't think we'll be including all three fastbacks in the Milwaukee panel, but we can maybe include one in there. We've got the uh, adjustables. Now, we spoke about these before. If you didn't know, the company that owns Milwaukee owns Ryobi. And the Ryobi adjustables are actually a better quality than the Milwaukee ones, in my opinion. From the look of them, it's a kind of a, it's a finer steel cast, because these are like castings. And it's a better casting, in my opinion. It's got some more detail on the jaws. I mean, they're both lifetime warranty. And who knew that? Did you know that Ryobi have lifetime warranty tools? I certainly didn't. We've got a set of woodworking chisels. Again, we wanted to make sure we could match up everything that we had in the Dewalt panel with the Milwaukee. So we've got a set of Milwaukee woodworking chisels and they're quarter inch up to an inch but then I also picked up an inch and a quarter. And the reason why is that is the same set that the Dewalt had. They had a set of five. So we ended up getting that so we could have a like for like. Again, do you want to see these power tool, hand tool matchups? I mean, the hand tools I've always used are like Knipex and Wera and dedicated hand tool brands. And now a lot of the power tool companies, Milwaukee and Dewalt, are really going into the hand tool market. And obviously Milwaukee have gone into the hand tool market in a big way. So it feels quite interesting to see if they're doing these tools to a good standard. And I think if you want to see more of that, let me know. We've got a proper torpedo level. So this is the proper job, aluminium body, and that was a nice little pickup, better than these two, but obviously a lot bigger. So I'll put that with the measurement stuff, speed square still. We've got a pair of aviation snips, just the straight ones. This is nice. These are plastic cutters. Now I'm an electrician and you can't see in here, but we've got 20 mil surface mounted metal clad sockets with 20 mil conduit going between them. Now I never used these. I used a blue set of pipe cutters that were actually designed for plumbers for using for PVC pipe. These are for that as well, to be fair. They say up to 25 mil pipe, but these would have been better for the conduit I was doing. And I probably will give that a quick go actually, because I've got some conduit here. Now they are a good tool. I've also got a set of Allen keys, massive holder on this. I mean, that is a stout, chunky old thing. So I'm interested to have a look at why that is so flipping beefy, because I much prefer a compact set of Allen keys. That thing there looks pretty stonking. Claw hammer, classic, really nice thing. Looks really smart, nice handle on it. This was quite an interesting one, because they must have worked with S-Wing on this. I've got this exact same model in S-Wing with a blue molding. And now they've got this Milwaukee one. So I'm guessing they're working with S-Wing on that. And finally, we've got a set of metric spanners that come in a nice holder. They go from eight mil up to 17 mil. So good range of spanners there. Could have done with a 19, I suppose. But um, yeah, good range of spanners. But we've certainly got a lot to go at. And I do have some other tools as well, if the panel is not quite full. Let's get them all opened and let's put a layout together. There we go, that is the layout sorted. Took a bit of balancing and jigging around. It's always tricky with a big area like this to get the layout bang on how you want it because there are just so many options. But what I try and do is group things together. So we've got the hammer and the chisels together. We've got the measurement things. So we've got the speed square, tape measures, you know, levels are together. Then we've got the screwdrivers. 
all in order and then together moving on to nut spinners which I've added. So they're a new item, these are Weha German made nut spinners and they're just the common sizes. Right down to some small ones though, so we have got 6mm, 7mm, 8mm, 10mm and 13 So a nice little set and it matches in, you know, it doesn't all have to be Milwaukee does it? And I didn't want to go out and buy more tools to make this panel nice and full as long as they are complementary. So for example, another example is I've added a fac arm set of snips, bull nose pliers and long nose. I didn't buy a set of the Milwaukee ones because I, I have so many and I knew I had those. So we've added those, we've added a beta, mole grips, we've added an Ipex Cobra plier and I, I flipping love this. Actually it's Knipex. We had this discussion with Colin. But you call it Nipex, I call it Nipex. And I asked them, and apparently it's Kniipex. Which is the last of the options that I would have Egg, Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna stay with Kniipex myself. Yeah, so there's the layout sorted. I did go and find my uh, pipe cutters. So these are ones I already had by John Guest. And I was cutting all of the conduit. This is from 20 mil conduit. So I just thought, well, I did say we'd give it a test. So just literally, it's relatively easy. I've never really struggled with them. But obviously we've picked up this Milwaukee pair. Let's give these a go. Pretty good, about the same. But the thing about these is they feel like they've got uh, well, the, the metal. These are obviously, this is a full plastic tool and these do feel a bit more uh, chunky, a bit more solid in your hand than these do. Although they do both cut about the same. What are these? John Guest made in France. So they are these, I've always been happy with these to be fair. I can't remember where I got them from, John Guest. Seems like a strange tool brand name, doesn't it? Let me know if you use John Guest tools. I think this is the only John Guest item I've got. And it's always good to have a bit of redundancy if you break a pair. And then what was the other thing I mentioned? Yeah, that was the, the pry bar that Milwaukee have. Doesn't it remind you of the S-Wing version? It might just be that it's just a similar style of handle, but as soon as I saw this one, it just made me think of these two S-Wings that I had. So there we go, I'll match them all up together and you can make your own decision there. I would assume that they've licensed the design or something, but they feel the same, same quality, same kind of casting quality but a nice item and I do like the Milwaukee one and the fact that I've actually now got a smaller one is good. That's pretty cool, that can go, again, if we do a compact toolkit, they're the kind of items that are nice to think about including. But there we go, so that's the layout. All I've got to do now is cut all of the tools into the foam and for that, it's very, very simple. If you've not been watching along and you don't know by now, I'll give you a quick reminder, it's cut and peel. So you just cut around the items with a scalpel or a sharp knife. Make sure you've got your glove on, never do any cutting without an anti-cut glove. And if you're wondering where you get the anti-cut glove from and you're wondering where you get the, the scalpel from, we have basic cutting kits. Here's one here. We include these with loads of orders on the website. So we've got this version and we've got a pro version, which has got a few extra bits in it. And basically these kits have everything you need to cut the shadow foam and get it dialed in exactly how you want it. So that's all I'm gonna be using today. Scalpel with a sharp blade on it, anti-cut glove, cut around the items, peel back the foam and create the perfect tool organizer, which will then go up on the wall behind me. So let's start cutting. So cutting is done and uh, always a pleasure, never a chore. Layout though was a bit tricky. Trying to nail down the layout is, it's worth taking the time. There was a, you might have seen cutting it. I kind of uh, had all the confidence in the world over this section. I flew along here. Same with the screwdrivers and nut spinners. I was more than happy with those. I feel like I had a nice edge to work from. The spacing was obvious. It was just get them all in and use up all the space. This middle section though was a bit trickier because you want to fill the whole space. You don't want any awkward shapes or awkward blank spots left. You want to fill it all, but then you want to maintain the categories. So it did take a lot more back and forth, I'd say. So, but you can see what I'm going for. You've got kind of all the screwdrivers here and then there was like a natural section missed out, which this pad saw slotted into and took up that space. That was lovely. And then that gave me a hard line to work from, which then I put these pliers in a row here, which flow from that box, which also looks nice. And it's nice to have a big prominent Milwaukee logo as well, which is, I was quite happy to have that somewhere in the center. We've got the spanners going in a nice logical order because we've got the large adjustable 
then the spanner's large down to small and then the small adjustable, which I really like. And we've got chisels where I originally had them next to the hammer. We've obviously got the pliers up here too. So it came together really well in the end, but it was a little bit tricky to, to kind of nail down the layout. But the cutting was very simple. Just cut around, peel. Most of these tools I've cut in quite deep too, because this panel's going on the wall and we want everything to stay in there and not fall out. So that's all that done, but we're not quite finished yet because we need some finger pulls. So you don't have to have finger pulls. They are a personal preference because you some of these items, like with the spanners, you can just get your finger in the kind of the ring on the end. But I like adding finger pulls. I like adding, adding tracks. So I've got a long straight edge here. And I always do the, when I'm doing a track, I use a steel ruler because it's a finger's width, 25 mil. So that's how I do the tracks. For odd little items like the screwdriver, I'll use a stencil set and I'll just do a little semicircle, cut that out and then that means that little individual light which can't go on a track is easy to get out. So that's the finger pulls. I'll cut all of those in. Once that's done, I've got to figure out how to get this up on the wall. And I won't be doing a French cleat this time. I've got a different idea, something I would consider a little bit more simple because I don't have to cut any timber. I don't have to kind of uh, rip anything down, but uh, I might have to nip out to try and find some of that. So let me get all the finger pulls cut and I'll come back to you with the finished result. There we go, all of the cutting is done. I love this bit, the big reveal. And I think the, the finger pulls really do add a lot more red to it and help with the layout. I think it looks really clean now. And we've obviously, every single item has got a nice easy way of getting it in and out. It's gonna make the foam last longer too because it doesn't get scruffy when you just kind of squeeze your fingers down the edge of tools. And I just think it makes it easier to use and it looks better. So it's a win-win really. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you add finger pulls to all your builds and projects? I highly recommend it. All we need to do now is mount it on this wall behind me. And we like French cleats. We love a French cleat. We've done quite a lot of videos. Go and check out this playlist here where we've done a load of different French cleat projects. Now this is gonna be mounted in a very similar way, but with a metal bracket off the shelf because I've got a few of these panels to do and I want them really solidly on the wall and also quite flush back to the wall rather than having like quite a thick French cleat. I think we can use kitchen brackets or a, a length of kitchen wall bracket. So it's much thinner profile, but it's the same process of like equal and opposite brackets that kind of match up. So it should make it easy to mount on the wall, but thinner and closer to it. So all I need now is a few lengths of that wall bracket material. I think I know where I can get it. There's a place in Northwich, Howden's, basically a kitchen wholesaler. So head down there and hopefully they can sort us out. So we're here at Howden's Northwich. They had what we needed. Basically they just call it wall brackets, but it's very similar to a French cleat. We got two two meter lengths and we can cut one piece down to go on the back of the frame. The other piece will go on the wall and it's much solider, slimmer than a French cleat. And it was eight pound a length. So you do need an account at Howden's, but Dave sorted us out and uh, we can come back and get some more nice and easy now with an account. So all sorted, let's get back to the workshop. Right, so I've got the bracket. Howden's had exactly what we needed. And as you can see, the Ryobi panel is gone. I took that down before I left. And we've got half of the bracket already mounted on the wall. So you can see literally, it's exactly like a French cleat, but slimmer. And it's an argument to say which is cheaper, really. It just depends how much your, uh, your raw material is for a French cleat. But I think eight quid for this is not bad at all. And obviously all we've got to do now is mount that on the back of this panel and then the whole panel lifts up. Now you can also see we've got lights, I basically mounted a nice tidy 20 mil piece of scrap on the wall and that's really super solid. That's screwed into the studs. Then we've got a little spacer rail down here because that spacer is the width of two of these to basically mean that the panel will sit nice and flush rather than tipping down. And yeah, we've got that one that's been done with a laser level so that, that's been nicely leveled. So that's our base and now we can switch these panels out and we've got Philips Hue bulbs around the outside. So I can change the color of that. So we can have some red light maybe for the Milwaukee panel. But all I've got to do now is mount this to the back of this panel and then lift it up on the wall. So let's do it. And there we go, the Milwaukee hand tool panel up on the wall in the new workshop and it's dead easy to lift it off, change it out. So obviously we do lots of power tool brand content and we don't want all the Dewalt fans going mental when you've got this in the background. Likewise, we don't want the we don't want to upset you Milwaukee heads. And obviously it gives us the opportunity to build more panels. So let me know which one do you want to see next? We've done a Ryobi, we've done a Dewalt, we've done a Dewalt power tool. We've now done the Milwaukee hand tools. Feels like we're crying out for a Milwaukee power tool panel, but we could do Bosch, we could do Skill. Maybe we need to look at some other brands, Flex, 
Hikoki maybe, Matabo, whatever you want basically, let me know in the comments. I read all the comments and it's a bit of a community <laughs> driven channel list now. So a lot of the projects we're doing are the ones you're suggesting. So don't miss out, make sure you're part of the conversation. Drop us a comment below, I read them all. I do reply to them all as well. So join in, let me know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel while you're down there. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers now. I can taste it. I think we're gonna have a, <laughs> we're gonna have a 100K plaque very soon and then we can come up with a cool idea for that and I can't wait to see it. Maybe it goes on this door or maybe that's a bit too simple, but let me know. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? Subscribe.